Thank you, Wendy. I'm going to um, cover the requirements from Prisma Access 3.1 and what we have out there. I'm Priya Ramaratnam. I'm a senior product manager with the Prisma Access team. So jumping right in. Uh, with Prisma Access 3.1, this went live sometime in April. And this basically highlights the key features that we're covering as part of this release. So when we look at it, we can see that as uh, four different different buckets, security services, Prisma Access as a platform, multi-tenancy for MSPs and enterprise, and finally, ADEM Insights. So with security services, there are two key features that we're bringing out with 3.1. One is integration with OKIO, where we're extending SASE to the home network uh, going uh, to protect the enterprise devices out there going beyond what we have today with mobile users and remote network. We'll go dive, um, dive deeper on these features in the next few slides as well. Um, so I'm just going to cover a high level here. Um, the next key feature under security services is next generation CASP bundle. So the components of the CASP bundle can be purchased together. Uh, that is SAS in line, DLP in line, SAS API, DLP API can be purchased as an add-on to Prisma Access. Um, the next pillar that we're looking at is Prisma Access as a platform. Here, there are a couple of key features that we're adding. One is providing cloud vendor redundancy when it comes to service connections. So more reliant system there. And we are expanding to new regions um, almost every couple of weeks. So we, uh, we, we'll talk about which regions are coming in. Uh, we have auto scaling improvement, improved policy recommendations on cloud management, as well as some enhancements on proxy. And finally, when we look at the third bucket, uh, this is enabling uh, multi-tenancy support on cloud management. So basically providing um, that ability to create multiple tenants, manage them in a hierarchy, uh, a more simplified activation and onboarding experience when you're managing multiple tenants, um, as well as providing sophisticated user roles with RBAC and ABAC controls per tenant. Uh, we'll again dive a little deeper when we go to that section. And finally, the last uh, pillar is ADEM and Insights, where we'll have a new alert framework on Prisma Access Insights, which will essentially help uh, reduce the number of fatigue alerts that are coming in and the ability to um, enable user experience and app performance monitoring based on user groups. That is um, the highlight for ADEM and Insights. Uh, with that, let's jump into each of these pillars. Uh, the first uh, pillar would be the CASP bundle that we spoke about. Uh, so, so far, these uh, components are purchased separately, activated separately. So we are providing a better solution there where SAS security in line, DLP in line, SAS security API, DLP API are all going to be purchased together and can be activated with a single SKU. Um, making that a much uh, simpler experience, a, simpl um, a simplified um, evaluation purchase process, as well as the ability to activate and use. Um, the next feature that we spoke about was integrating with OKIO. So OKIO will also be available as an add-on to Prisma Access. So we would also secure the home printers and other enterprise devices that are out there, the corporate devices that are out there, apart from just securing mobile users and remote networks. So this provides a complete uh, SASE experience for our um, enterprise users. Along with that, we'll also have a visibility of OQ on Prisma Access Insights. So we'll pr basically pr provide any information on the connectivity health um, for both mobile users and remote network when connecting to OKIO and um, tunnel health, device location, all of these details will be available um, through Prisma Access Insights. Uh, jumping into our next pillar, which is Prisma Access for service providers. Um, so here we notice that there is a lack of flexibility today uh, requiring multiple um, activations when it comes to setting up different tenants um, and 
Uh, basically, there is no way to manage the hierarchy in a simplified manner. So we have a couple of features that we have rolled out just to support managed service providers as well as distributed enterprise. Basically, anyone who wants to handle uh, distributed tenants or multiple tenants in a single system. Um, so what we're introducing is a multi-tenant cloud management portal. So this would be a centralized uh, cloud management dashboard uh, which is basically going to help you navigate through the multiple tenants and also uh, provide high level data and granularity to look at uh, for handling multiple tenants. Rather than um, diving deep into each of those tenants, we'll also have a summary view of um, all what's happening in all of those hierarchical child tenants that is being managed. Second is we will also have support for public API, so scalable API gateway service, so that there is an easy integration and you can automate easily with the backend infrastructure. Uh, third, there is going to be more flexibility with licensing, um, where we can activate um, licenses for each of those tenants and having sophisticated R back and A back features that are per tenant um, or tenant specific for each of those tenants that have been created. Uh, we can easily scale with this multi-tenant cloud infrastructure. That is, uh, tenants can be added on the go, tenants can be integrated, licenses can be activated and distributed accordingly to each of these tenants. Um, so a little bit on the hierarchical multi-tenant cloud management portal, uh, we would have an easier way to summarize monitor and manage the threats, licenses, application. Um, it would be easier to view the um, service status. Uh, you would be able to do a bulk um, configuration and automation update easily, uh, manage all of your tenants, manage all of your licenses and subscriptions as well uh, to know which license has been activated against which of the subscriptions, as well as a centralized identity and um, access management. Um, which makes it uh, much easier than it is today. Um, another key feature as part of the Prisma Access platform is aggregate uh, QoS migration. So if you use QoS today, when we migrate to aggregate uh, migration model, uh, basically we can retain the same QoS um, and the support will ensure that there is a guaranteed deterministic bandwidth allocated per site and provide business continuity and better performance um, for those high business critical applications that are out there. Um, here, um, a little bit on the cloud vendor redundancy for service connections. So what's new here is irrespective or agnostic of the cloud vendor, uh, we will have redundancy in service connection. So you can use a backup service connection with a different cloud provider. So what that means is in case there is a failure with respect to the specific cloud provider, we would still have resiliency in terms of Prisma access where we can back up with a secondary or a different cloud provider providing a much more resilient and high degree of redundancy um, in case of any outages or failures that we could see. So this is one of the key features that we have uh, from a PA Infra perspective. Uh, finally, we have also introduced a new compute region in Chile. Um, so the, Prisma access locations uh, will also be mapped to Chile, and that would be Peru, Argentina, Bolivia, uh, to provide a better, uh, lower latency and a better performance. Uh, we also released 3.1.1 and 3.1.2, so quickly covering what's uh, part of that specific release. Um, so with 3.1.1, we have uh, DDNS registration for remote endpoint um, IPs or FQDN, basically for use cases where um, you use a remote um, de uh, desktop or you're trying to use host names or FQDN to log on to uh, remote desktops or basically reverse IP lookups and the critic there is criticality in identifying the host name and IP mappings. Uh, we have a solution for that where we can basically update 
um, the enterprise uh, DNS records with ANPTR records from the CDL um, with the latest FQDN and IP host name mappings. That will basically help in uh, endpoint management as well as IT help desk to troubleshoot and a remote access a desktop. Um, OKO will also support um, NATing or network uh, address translation to uh, basically configure custom IP pool for OKO in network settings. Uh, finally, with 3.1.2, we are also enhancing and providing the ability uh, to create security policy rules to block login attempts basically for certain uh, specific countries that you might want to. So if there are incoming um, connections that you see from countries that you would not um, like access from, then we have the ability to block them uh, using security policy rules uh, by using a combination basically of the names, tags, and actions. And uh, we can always dive deeper and look at the resources as to how this can be enabled. Uh, these are basically the key highlights that we have from a 3.1 perspective. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop here for any questions that you might have.